You were not meant to be a slave to the grind. You were not meant to trade your life force for money. You can escape gravity. You can unlock your life. You got this. Let's go. Hello and welcome to Unlock Your Life. I'm your host, Jennings Smith. It's a beautiful day. It's about 65 degrees here, a January day in Somerville, South Carolina. And today I'm talking about, is it possible to make $9,000 a month in passive income off of one apartment deal? I know when I first heard something like that, it seemed really unreal. It didn't seem like that was something that I would ever be able to achieve. And yet, as I learned more about this industry and as I dug into the details, I saw, hey, maybe it's possible. And guys, every deal is different. And I don't want you to use this necessarily as a textbook, but I'm here to stretch your mind and start thinking about what could I do and how long it would take me. So we're going to go through a case study of going from zero dollars a month in passive income to nine thousand a month in passive income over the next 180 days over the next six months what would that look like so life gets pretty fun at you know nine ten thousand a month in passive income because you've got your job and now you've got nine or ten grand rolling in and that is probably covering the majority of your bills maybe all your bills maybe you that's all your bills and then some whatever situation you're in but you have a lot of uh, breathing room now. You have a little bit more free time. Maybe it's not such a big deal to go to Disney World on that vacation with the kids or take your wife to Europe. Life gets really fun at 50000 a month passive income. Now you're talking, you can pretty much go wherever you want, stay wherever you want. You're not worried about going out to eat. You're not super worried about the monthly budgets. I mean, we all still have constraints on what we can spend. But 50000 a month, it's just a different world than most people are living in, especially if this is rolling in without you working 40, 60, 80 hours a week to get there. So can you do that in six months? No, I don't think so. Probably not. But if you did that consistently, if you did what we're talking about consistently for a couple of years, absolutely you can get there. So... I started with rental homes. I started with mobile homes and rental homes. If you followed my story, you know that I started to buy a trailer at five grand was my first purchase and it cash flowed a few hundred dollars a month. I moved from that into more trailers and eventually single family rentals. And the problem with single family rentals is it's so hard to scale it. They're small deals. You have to have the down payment. Each one only makes a couple hundred bucks a month. And so to make nine, 10 grand a month in passive income, you're talking 50 rental homes, right? 50 rental homes to get anywhere close to that. So does that make sense? Is that what I want to do? Managing and buying, purchasing, and thinking about all the down payments needed to get a portfolio of that size. And it really isn't too easy to do. And if you're only adding a thousand dollars a month, $1,500 a month in passive income, you're not really changing your lifestyle. And over the course of a year, that's like, what, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. I mean, one roof goes out, one air conditioner breaks, and that money's gone. So we're talking about how do we change our lifestyle? How do we change and build legacy wealth? How do we change the trajectory of our children's future? Well, I found that with apartments, and if you're listening to this, you probably like apartments or, or want to buy more real estate. Maybe you already have some real estate. We know that that's the game, right? Because now you're talking about able to buy 30, 40, 50, quote unquote, rental homes in one deal, right? Now you're cash flowing a couple hundred dollars per unit, but you have a thousand units. So it changes the game of, of what you're doing. You're also able to get better debt, better terms, they're bigger deals, you can raise capital, you can raise the down payments, you can scale. And it just is a totally different game than being stuck in single family homes. And if you have single family homes, I have nothing against single family homes. And if you don't have any deals going on, I also have nothing against single family homes. I just don't think you should camp there. I don't think you should live there for the rest of your life. I think that you need to understand that there are bigger games to play 
that could be more profitable and help you get where you want to go faster, right? Because the object, the goal is not to own an apartment. The goal is not to own 20, 30 rental homes. The goal is to have the income without trading my life for it. The goal is to be able to pick up and go to Hawaii with the wife and the kids next month if I want to and be able to do that without it stressing me out. That's what we're trying to accomplish, to be able to give to my church, to be able to give to the person that's in need, to support the causes that I care about. We're not doing this to buy another piece of real estate, to buy sticks and bricks. We're building this for freedom. And so what's the most efficient, fastest way to build that? And that's what we need to focus on. So let me break down a little case study and build up some belief in you right now. Think about how you get paid on an apartment deal. You get paid four ways. And this is how off of one deal it's possible to make nine grand a month in passive income. So let's do the math. We got a 24 unit that we're buying for two and a half million dollars. 24 units, two and a half million dollars, pretty reasonable deal. Now that may seem like a lot to you if you're just now listening and you only have a rental home or maybe you don't have anything, maybe two and a half million dollars seems out of reach. But when you get into this world, that's actually a pretty reasonable deal. It's not out of the ordinary. And there's tons of them all over America. Tons of 15 units, 16 units, 24 units, 50 units, not massive deals easy to get your arms around. Okay, so two and a half million dollar purchase price, $100,000 a unit. The first way you're gonna get paid on this deal is your acquisition fee. So this is typically 2% of the purchase price. So what was our purchase price? Two and a half million. What's the acquisition fee on that? $50,000. Two and a half million times 2%, 50 grand. All right, so there's our first chunk of the income side. Now. Where is this acquisition fee coming from? What is an acquisition fee? An acquisition fee is something that's paid to syndicators, right? People that put together deals as essentially a thank you or a bonus or a paying them for their work of finding the deal, vetting it out, getting the loan, raising all the money, putting the deal together, all the legal work, everything to get the deal from discovery to signing the closing documents and the acquisition fee is due at the closing of the deal. This is paid by the investors, right? So if you've got 10 people throwing in, let's just say uh, 75,000 each, right? For this down payment, the 50 grand fee is coming out of that pot, right? All those investors are paying the fee. So, you know, they don't want it to be a 10% acquisition fee because they're paying the bill, but they also understand that it's a lot of work to find these deals. It's a lot of work to put them together to raise the capital and you need to be compensated for that. And so it's pretty much a standard in all syndicated real estate deals that there is an acquisition fee. Sometimes it's as low as, you know, 1%. Sometimes I've seen them as high as 5% if there's lots of development or building, but most of the time they're 2 to 3%. The second way, that we're gonna get paid on this two and a half million dollar deal is we're gonna get an asset management fee. So an asset management fee is not the property management fee. Now, if you were the property manager, then you would get 8%, 10% of the rents coming in, and that would be your fee, but you would have to manage the property, right? You'd have to place all those tenants, you'd have to handle all the repairs, all the evictions, the calls in the middle of the night, my toilets backing up, you know, the neighbor above me is being too loud, et cetera, et cetera. And that's not what we're signing up for. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a property manager. So I've hired property managers for all of my properties, but on most of them, I am the asset manager. The asset manager is managing the property managers. The buck stops with the asset manager. He or she is following the financials every month. They're putting together reports for the investors. They're paying out the distributions. They are making sure that the renovations are on track. They're making sure that the contractors are not going over budget. So a good asset manager is extremely vital to a successful real estate project. And the going rate for asset management is 2% of the rents, okay? So if you're the asset manager, you're getting 2% of the gross rents collected. And this is not for managing the property. 
This is for the asset management. So let's just say we've got 24 units and they're rented for $1,250. Okay, so they're all two bedrooms and they're all rented for $1,250 a month. If you take that times 24 units times 12 months, that's 30,000 a month, 360,000 a year, and 2% of that is $7,200. So now you've got $7,200 more of income coming in on top of the 50 grand that we got paid as the acquisition fee. Okay, so we're building up a little bit of money on our first deal. Next, we're gonna move to the rental cash flow. Now the rental cash flow is what's left over above and beyond, right? So when we collect rents, we've got bills to pay. We've got to pay for our tax bill. We've got to pay for our insurance. We've got to pay our water bill, our sewer bill, our dumpsters. We got to pay the maintenance guys. If the roof is leaking, we got to fix the roof. We got to pay the roofer. We've got a lot of bills to pay. And, uh, but once we pay all that and we pay our mortgage, of course, Sometimes, if you're doing it right, you know, there's money left over. That's the whole reason why we're doing this. We're trying to turn a profit on these. So, in this example, let's just say we're collecting $360,000 a year, right? $30,000 a month. Now, 50% of that is going to go towards vacancy, right? Bad debt, people not paying us, vacancy, people not being in the apartment. We're not 100% occupied. We're going to have expenses, water, sewer, trash, taxes, insurance, all that's going to equal about 50%, right? So that cuts it down to 180,000, right? You take 360,000, let's just cut it in half. So we have 180,000 left of net operating income, NOI. So gross rents minus your expenses, but before your mortgage, that's how you calculate net operating income, NOI. So we have 180,000 NOI, but remember, we've got a mortgage to pay. So a mortgage, a 25-year amortization mortgage at six and a half percent interest is going to run us about 140 grand a year. So 140,000 is going out the door right to the bank. But remember, we're paying that down. We're amortizing debt. So we're amortizing about $30,000 a year, and it only grows, right? As we continue to pay that debt down, the percentage that goes towards the principal versus the interest grows. You look at an amortization table or Google an amortization table and you'll see how that works. So $30,000 a year is paying the mortgage off, but we still have $20,000 a year in excess cash flow, right? Because remember we had $160K left over paying our mortgage at $140K. So there's another $20,000 in cash flow plus the mortgage pay down, right? Unfortunately, remember we had investors. We didn't have the full down payment to buy this. So we've got to split the money up. Okay. So even though there's 50K coming in between debt pay down and free cash flow, we maybe only own 30% of that deal. So we own 30% of that deal. The investors own 70%. We get to keep 30% of 50 grand, which is $15,000 per year getting amortized or coming in through the cash flow. The fourth way we're getting paid, right? So we've got number one, acquisition fee, 50 grand. Number two, asset management fee, 7,200 a year. Number three, rental cash flow. We're getting 15,000 of that. That's our share after we pay the investors, pay the mortgage, all that. Number four, we've got appreciation. This is the big boy, right? This is the huge one. So let's say over five years, We can bump rents up to $1,500 a month. So over five years, we go from $1,250 a month to $1,500 a month. Not a massive increase, but it takes us five years to do it. We're bumping rents $20, $30 a year, and we're getting there. We're taking care of our property. It's in a growing market. Inflation is now working for us. I mean, if you think about what's going on, I mean, if food has inflated, 24% in 2023. And the government's telling us that the inflation rate is 9%, 10%. That's very, very uh, generous for us to agree with that. Let's just agree with that. Let's just say that rents continue to march up a little bit over the next five years. We don't need them to go up 10% a year, but a few percent a year. So now we're pushed up to $1,500 a month. 
Here's where commercial real estate really shines, especially over single family. In single family, if your neighborhood is not going up in value, your house is not going up in value. And the person buying your house doesn't care what you're renting your house for. That doesn't really matter to them because they're probably buying it to move in there with their wife and their children. And it's just, it's not going to be a rental home. Commercial is different. The investor that's buying your property is only looking at how much money does this property make? They're looking at the debt they've got to borrow to buy it and their cost of the capital for the down payment. And if those make sense, then they can pay whatever that dictates. Okay, so if we bump rents $250 per unit per month, we're adding $72,000 a year to the income. Okay, so $250 times 24 units times 12, that's $72,000 every year. But remember, we got to pay the, the property manager. Maybe our taxes have gone up a little bit. Maybe our insurance has gone up a little bit. So let's just say we only keep 50 grand of that. It doesn't cut it 50%, right? Because we were running you know, at 50% at 1250 a month. But it doesn't quite all go to the bottom line. So we keep $50,000 after all of our expenses, in addition to the money we were making before. So at an eight cap, Right. If you divide that number by 8%, that increases the value by $625,000. So if you know anything about real estate, you know an 8 cap is pretty conservative. That's the capitalization rate. A capitalization rate means you take the net operating income and you divide it by the cap rate. So the lower the cap rate is, the higher the valuation of the building. So an eight cap, a nine cap, a 10 cap, those are great deals if you're buying it. They're not great deals if you're selling it. If you're selling, you want to be selling at a four cap, a five cap, a three cap if you can, right? So the better the area and the better and newer the asset, the lower that cap rate's going to be. The worse the area, the worse condition the property's in, the higher that cap rate is going to be. So We've now added $625,000 to our property. So I'm making the assumption that in five years, we're selling the property for $3.125 million instead of $2.5 million. You may say, well, Jennings, you don't know that it's going to appreciate that much. You're right. I don't. But I feel like that's a very conservative assumption if you can bump rents $250. Because if you can now generate Instead of 180000 in NOI, we're generating $230,000 in NOI. Why would that property value not go up? If it's making more money, the investor that's going to buy it from you can afford to pay more for it. And this is how commercial real estate is mostly valuated. It's a formula and you can calculate it. You can make performers off of it and you can make decisions, raise capital. This is why this stuff really is powerful. Okay. So appreciation is our big one, but remember we don't get to keep all 625,000. We only own 30% of this deal. The investors own the other 70%. So our portion of that is $37,500. All right. So let's recap. We've got our acquisition fee, 50 grand. We've got our asset management, $7,200 a year. We've got our rental cash flow and our debt pay down of $15,000 a year. That's our share. And then we've got our share of the appreciation because we raised rents a little bit. And that's $37,500. You add all that up, it's $109,700. If you divide that by 12, that's a little over $9,000 a month. Now, I know you're probably sitting there at home saying, well, Jennings, you're not really getting all that every year in cash flow. Well, that's true. And you're only getting that acquisition fee one time, right? 50K up front. That is also true. And the biggest payday is on the appreciation and the debt paid out. And, when, and that comes when you sell it on the back end. I agree. But if you close a deal, if you break that mental barrier, you break that and start to build your reputation as someone that can raise capital, that can close deals, that can get stuff over the finish line, and you close that 24 unit, do you think that you're going to stop? Do you think you're not going to close maybe two deals that year? Maybe you're going to close one in year two. Maybe you're going to close two in year two. Maybe you're going to keep on going. And you can continue to earn these acquisition fees. And now you're turning full cycle on some of the first deals you've done. 
and you're able to generate profits off of those. You're getting the benefit of these increased valuations. This is where we are now. I started this process three and a half, four years ago, and we're turning the cycle on some of these. We're refinancing them and pulling some cash out. We're selling some of our properties and, and taking profits on these. And so these numbers become very, very real. And I also want you to think about what job is going to pay you like this. Even if you're getting the majority of that five or $600,000 that you're earning over the lifetime of this, even if you're getting the majority of that on the back end, nothing else is going to pay you 500 grand in five years. So you might as well get started today. And that leads me into my second part of this thing, which is how do we do it? I love it, Jennings. I want to do it. So how do I do it? You only need three things to do it. Three things to close your first apartment deal in the next six months. Number one, you need to know what you're doing. I need to know what I'm doing. I need to have that basic understanding. How do I analyze this stuff? How do I know what to pay? How do I structure it? This is just general knowledge. You can learn this on YouTube. You can learn this on a course. I have a course. You can just learn the knowledge and that's part of it. It's not going to get you a deal all the way across the finish line though. But that's the first step is you got to learn the raw material. Secondly, I'm going to need deal flow. I'm going to need to be able to find deal flow. I'm going to be able to underwrite it, put it under contract and buy that stuff. And then thirdly, maybe most importantly, I'm going to need funding. You're going to need two sources of funding. You need funding for your primary debt, right? Your large piece of the pie. And then you're going to need funding for your down payment. So if you're wanting to buy a $3 million apartment, you may be able to get a $2 million loan, but you're going to need to bring a million dollars in capital or cash to the closing table to close the deal. So you have to be able to raise capital from investors and you got to be able to get the loan from the bank. And if you can't get the loan from the bank, you're going to need a partner to do that for you. And so the first piece of the pie is pretty easy, right? The knowledge, understanding, getting there, and that brings credibility. But the second piece is networking, relationships, and partnerships. Partnerships with your investors. Partnerships with other people that are closing deals. Partnerships with deal flow. Partnerships for people that can help you close those deals, get them across the finish line. This is the stuff that cannot be bought in a course or learned on YouTube. This is the kind of stuff that happens through joining networking groups, through going to conferences, to being in masterminds, to doing the work and putting in the reps and building real relationships with people that are going to help you. But if you're willing to do that, the results will come. The passive income will come. The back end rewards will stack up. And before you know it, you're in the position of buying these large portfolios and more importantly, leveraging that debt in your favor and paying them down and looking back four or five, 10 years down the road and the income coming in is just unstoppable, right? The net worth that's being built, the debt that you're amortizing every month that you're paying down every month through your tenants is unstoppable. And that's where we want to go. So guys, I have a network it's called The Deal Room. If you follow me for any period of time, you know about that. If you want to learn more about The Deal Room, if you want to jump on a call with me or with Yaden and see what it's about, shoot me a message. You know, Shoot me a message on any of these platforms, Instagram, Facebook. I'll respond. I'll get you set up where you can talk with us about it, learn more about it. It costs $400 a month, so it's not crazy expensive. There is a cost and a commitment to it. If that's something you want to do, then, then hit me up. I appreciate you. Have a great week and don't forget to unlock your life. Peace. This is the podcastfactory.com.